So I got to researching supercharger pulleys for these old Powerdyne blowers. And I had already bought a slightly smaller one the first time I rebuilt the blower. That was, the blower did have a catastrophic failure shortly after I bought it. That's a, that's a subject for another video. Um, but the first time I rebuilt the blower, I got one size smaller pulley. Um, and it really didn't up the boost at all. Um, but at least I tried. It, it upped it just a teeny, teeny bit. So I got back on that website that I bought the pulley from. And I found out that they only had one size smaller. And it, you know, obviously wasn't going to make much of a difference. So, I talked to my machinist friend, and it turned out the company he works at had just recently purchased a CNC lathe. Thus, I got on SolidWorks, and I drew up a super tiny pulley. And this is the result right here. It is not coated or painted in any way. Uh, we just went ahead and we machined it out of just some scrap aluminum that they were going to throw away. And um, it's working out great so far. I did have to get a slightly smaller belt. And it's basically maxed out on tension right now, so I might even need to go to a smaller belt on it. Thankfully, the supercharger kit has a manual tensioner, so you can get it as tight as you want um, to get rid of belt slip. So, what I ended up doing to tune it, I'm going to go in the car for this. So the process for getting the car to run correctly with this new smaller pulley was not super involved um but since this is an old school car um it's it's a little bit different normally what you would do in this situation is you would install your smaller pulleys and you would get the car flashed you would go to a company like apr and they would just flash your car um over the internet typically you just upload it directly through your obd2 port with a laptop or some kind of a scan tool and you're done since this is an obd1 car and i have this weird multi-tune set up what i ended up doing is you just play around with that knob. Get the, I started out with the knob all the way up so the car was as rich as possible. So I was being as careful as possible when getting into boost. And then um, I went ahead and I put a new wideband O2 sensor in the car to make sure that it was as accurate as possible. So with a new wideband, I could watch my fuel mixture and make sure it was safe and not running too lean. And then as soon as I knew that the car was running sufficiently rich, I could start dialing the fuel out with that little knob to get it to a good mixture to make decent power. So how's the car running? Well, not perfect. So <laughs> the first thing that happens when you put a new belt on a supercharger like this with a manual tensioner is it has to seat in. What'll happen is you'll put that belt on the car and you'll tension it down to whatever your desired tension is. Um, one more thing the supercharger kit came with was this little, was this little belt tensioning tool so you press this down on the belt and this little arm comes up and then this thing will click you'll hear that click when it bottoms out and then that will tell you how much tension you've put into the belt and on this particular supercharger kit Dynan recommends um, on your first couple of rounds of tensioning to do a hundred pounds so you tension it once drive it around belt starts to slip you tension it again drive it around belt starts to slip then you tension it a third time at 90 pounds and then typically you're good to go until the belt stretches and um, it's just at the end of its life so we got the belt tension all sorted out and I got the fuel relatively sorted out um, still running it pretty safely at wide open throttle it's at about a 10.9 to 1 ratio which is fairly safe that's fairly rich but that's what the cars always run at and it's it's made good power at that level so then I developed a misfire and it's only misfiring under boost. Well, that typically only means one of two things. You're running out of fuel, you're not getting enough fuel, or your spark is blowing out in boosted engines. So uh, I came to the realization that I have not changed the plugs in this car in a good little while, maybe a year. I usually try to do it once a year um, in springtime because um, I normally just don't drive the car that much in the winter. So here we are in winter, and I'm modifying the car with the bigger supercharger pulleys and more boost and stuff. So I went ahead and I ran down to O'Reilly's, grabbed some new plugs, and gapped them much tighter. So the stock gap on these plugs was in the 30 thousandths, and I took them down to about 23 thousandths, as was recommended on um, the Boosted Beamer forums that I looked on. So now we're going to take it for another drive and see how it goes. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Hell yeah. Oh man, is that better? Holy crap. God, who knew spark plugs would make such a massive difference? I did. Oh boy, is that good. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Gas lights on. That makes sense. She's thirsty. Well, let's go grab some 93 and wrap up this video. So that's going to be it for this first like project update video for the M3. There's always stuff going on with this car. If you like this channel, if you like seeing modified BMW stuff and or potentially LS swap stuff in the future, um, I've got a few crazy projects planned. Um, nothing currently in the works except for the 8 series. What a terrible outro. Thanks for watching.